So welcome everyone to another bi-weekly SES status update. Um, today we are going to talk about the Resilience Improvement Strategic Initiative, some, something that we've been uh, working intensively on with uh, quite a few stakeholders from MakerDAO uh, the last couple of weeks. Today is meant as a more general introduction, so if you have already joined all the stakeholder meetings, this will probably uh, be a recap. And uh, um, the initiative will be presented by Retro, um, who will have a look at uh, the challenges that MakerDAO is facing and why we think that um, a resilience improvement initiative uh, was needed. So Retro, take it ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Vouter. Uh, diving right into the agenda, as uh, Vouter alluded to, uh, we will start off first by uh, talking about why the Resiliency Improvement Initiative is needed and move into uh, defining that a little bit better. Uh, we'll then share some of the documentation that we're creating around that uh, with the goal of creating visions and strategies. And then uh, move into the initiative planning and next steps uh, for the project. So why is a uh, vision and strategy needed uh, at a changing MakerDAO? Uh, the focus here is that there's been a recent mindset shift from the early days of the DAO in 2021 to what we're uh, currently working through now in 2022. The, uh, elements that uh, the DAO was operating, or the perspective that the DAO was operating under in 2021 was uh, more of a growth mindset, similar to a startup, where getting the basics up and running were the main concerns. Uh, core units and delegation rose as the primary operational constructs for both um, governance as well as the workforce. And at the time, this posed no, uh, the maker protocols profits pose no restrictions to this and supported the aggressive growth the uh because profits were higher and it was a better market um but what we're starting to see is that the startup growth model that the DAO was operating under is now maturing into a company that uh, is more focused on working off of the profits uh, from the operations rather than uh, investment and development so this shift from abundance to scarcity can now be summarized as uh, expenses are quickly approaching recurring revenue, which is forcing uh, the delegation and governance teams to take a closer look at spending to identify either ways to save on expenses or ways to capture more revenue. And for the first time, there really isn't uh, enough money to do everything. Uh, there were a lot of pet projects that were possibly initially started. And a part of tightening the budgets, we also need to tighten the work and the direction that the organization is headed in. Uh, that could be summarized by saying prioritization is needed. And uh, we need to make some potentially hard choices related to uh, that prioritization. So with all of this, uh, the best way to try to navigate these waters is to develop a long-term vision and strategy and really go back to answering some of the hard questions that have maybe been set aside from the early days of the DAO and focus now on, on solidifying the vision that's been emerging from various different teams and stakeholders. So with that, the mindset shift from scarcity uh we we need to focus on resilience and improving the resiliency of the the DAO. this initiative has uh two main goals which is first uh, in the short term uh and through working setting this longer term vision uh, improving the DAO's finances and operational resiliency making it more efficient and recession proof uh, additionally with that we want and we'll start to experiment with how core units and delegates can coordinate better towards creating an immersion strategy and vision. Uh, the, the purpose for these two goals is that the uh, short-term changes that we're seeing need to be made and can be made quicker 
uh, also need to fit into this long-term uh, strategy in order to make sure that it's robust and uh, sustainable. And the specific stakeholders working on these goals are interested delegates. Uh, I, I think it's interesting to note here that this is one of the first formal uh, engagement points for delegates within the DAO uh, outside of just general forum communications, but really, really sitting down with core units and the rolling up their sleeves and, and working on challenges together. Uh, the other stakeholders then would be the relevant core unit representatives and SES is currently serving as the initiative facilitator. The resiliency improvement strategic initiative uh, will be accomplished through the following activities. The uh, first step that we've been uh, investing a lot of time in and had a lot of engagement around are the stakeholder alignment meetings uh, where we bring delegates and core units together to share updates on the work that's going into this initiative. Uh, with that as well, in these meetings, we summarize the ongoing concerns, problems, and risks, trying to build the narrative and making sure that everybody has the same context and information for decision making with uh, the uh, framework above provided, we'll then collect proposed high level solutions and identify their pros and cons and eventually distill these down into a solutions roadmap uh, with a coherent strategy that is built around clusters of stakeholder support uh, as well as uh, documenting this into a roadmap that eventually will be executed by the core units to achieve that vision and strategy. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of how that's created here in just a second. With the um, goals and activities in mind, there are some challenges we need to work through. So first off, what's in scope? Uh, it's a little hard to say at this point. Uh, there's a lot in scope and we need support of uh, various different groups to coordinate, to enable uh, the influx of information as well as digestion that needs to occur. Uh, some of the parties involved and the areas that we'll lean on them for would be uh, Nadia and Sam leading aggressive growth. Dennis uh, investing a lot of work into conversation framing that is uh, manifesting into debate training for relevant stakeholders, as well as uh, a couple other workshops uh, that will be um, shared and uh, re released in the future as much as possible. The uh, delegate and facilitator uh, are also coordinating an onsite uh, part of Dennis's uh, initiative. Uh, and some of the work that we're already starting to see uh, manifests from this. Uh, an example would be the MIT 40 proposal where delegates and strategic finance have worked together to uh, build a new framework that recently got approved at the start of this week. The uh, relevant governance strategies that we want to make sure and scope will be um, supported by GovAlpha and Ducks. And any transparency and quality control uh, infrastructures and challenges uh, is in SES's wheelhouse, uh, building on a lot of the work that we've provided already. And the hardest thing uh, that we've been experiencing is to limit scope creep. Uh, we want to work with stakeholders to define a clear vision, but it also needs to be manageable. Uh, if we start going too far into specific details, um, we, we won't be successful. So achieving this high level um, investigation as well as formation of vision and strategies is, uh, again, just to reinforce the overall goal. Specifically speaking, uh, the delegates then will focus on setting the direction and uh, being responsible for evaluating the outcomes of the uh, vision or of the strategies and, and the work that uh, will eventually go into achieving the vision and strategies. And then uh, core units will be responsible for delivering the work. This uh, may uh, be formed into additional initiatives that we've seen. Uh, the word initiative is used a lot, but to separate it, this would be the, the core, cross core unit initiatives like CMON, CMOF, Layer 2. Um, and they will also have uh, to provide the data to the, de the delegates in order to uh, position them to be uh, able to evaluate the outcomes. The sources of data are gonna be pretty diverse for this and uh, some work has started and some work is ongoing. 
the direct engagement that we have with stakeholders uh, could be summarized as uh, stakeholder engagement meetings, where the SES team uh, right now has completed several uh, interviews with delegates and other relevant core unit units to gauge uh, initially where their vision and strategies uh, currently lie. These stakeholder meetings are supported um, by, um, I'm sorry, these stakeholder meetings will then feed into the creation of a vision alignment questionnaire. The uh, questionnaire will be supported by uh, professional resources. Uh, one of them is a professor of political science from Stanford University, uh, Andy Hall. We recently onboarded him as a grantee to support this initiative. And with his support, we're hoping to uh, produce a very robust and complete vision alignment questionnaire that uh, will then feed into creating a living challenges and solutions register. Uh, the challenges and solutions register will be a tool that both delegates, core units in this initiative will use to explore the data and uh, again, uh, try to create some of the missing context that we've been seeing in discussions uh, across the DAO. Uh, with that as well, we wanna be um, appreciative of the rich history that MakerDAO has. So we are investing effort into extracting uh, challenges, solutions, uh, and the associated pros and cons of those solutions from forum posts. Um, that was the majority of the activity that I did this week. And one interesting comment to, to bring up here is that um, some of the ideas that have been made in comments that lie dormant uh, in the forum are coming back to life now. And uh, honestly, the, the perspective that they had uh, back during the early days of the DAO um, provides a nice uh, contrast to how uh, the solutions have evolved, but also it's good to, to reach back and, and, and make sure that we pull in some of the original values and the original uh, perspectives that the DAO had from working in an abundance mindset to make sure that growth uh, and sustainability are still at the forefront of responding to any challenges that the DAO is facing. Uh, and something else to note from the form extraction is that this also provides an opportunity for different mediums to be included. So one example is the GNR summaries provided by GovComs that provides a great way to um, quickly review uh, hours of footage uh, in text form to make that extraction more manageable. Uh, to provide an example of some of the challenges and risks uh, that we're initially um, anticipating and seeing uh, from the stakeholders is uh, the concept of addressing waste and lack of accountability, uh, mostly through uh, the budgets. Uh, there's also negative fallout of budget restrictions and market downturns. How should the DAO respond to this, both operationally and strategically? Uh, whether it's the deployment of assets, debt raises, or uh, tightening budgets. Uh, core unit offboarding has also been a ongoing topic of discussion. I'm not sure if uh, Tim's on the call, but his work with um, the, uh, at least GovAlpha and, and I'm sure other core units uh, is uh, produced a better framework and, and an example of the power that uh, can be achieved once uh, delegates work closer to achieve uh, or to set the strategy and to in, in invest the uh, the needed guidance into uh, addressing some of these challenges there's also lack of feedback uh, lack of quality control and messy intellectual property management uh, that we're anticipating that needs to be addressed and single points of failure and bus factors are also some of the challenges that rune has mentioned in his dow singularity plan uh, talking about fixing some of the operational debt that is uh, apparent across the DAO. And ultimately, too, uh, an uncore vision at the very highest level is uh, one that needs to be addressed. From that, though, uh, some uh, proposed solutions uh, to those challenges, well, like I said, would be the MIT 40 restructuring, uh, various MKR token redesigns that have been discussed, like Staker Maker with Monet Supply. Uh, aggressive growth plans that have been published both by uh, uh, Max, uh, I'm sorry, Sam and uh, Nadia Growth and, and other uh, stakeholders. Uh, separating risks from the surplus 
<clears throat> and operational runway is also a large challenge that needs a lot of thought and consideration and analysis around um, and revisiting SES's governance po party models uh, are all in scope. But again, each of these are complex and require a broad and long-term commitment to achieve. So um, building an environment to, to make sure that these complex issues have the time to be worked on uh, is where the vision and strategy and the eventual roadmap comes into play. So in order for us to build that roadmap, we need to have uh, documentation and a way to be able to talk about this consistently. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, the uh, registers that I talked about can be found on SES's website, uh, going to ses.maker.network backslash resiliency. Uh, this was talked about in this week's stakeholder alignment meeting, and it is now live. It's still a work in progress, but we'd be excited to collect any feedback. Uh, the initial data that's in there has just been uh, more experimentation to build out the uh, initial uh, framework and structure. Uh, and over the coming weeks, we will uh, be investing a, a big push to uh, extract more data from the forums, uh, the delicate conversations, the questionnaire, and, and make this a, a complete tool for the DAO to use, uh, not only during uh, resiliency um, strategic initiatives and training, or not training, but uh, alignment, but also in, in uh, a, a way to uh, make sure that ideas are recognized within the DAO and uh, that they have some stickiness to um, ongoing discussions. The specific resources that could be found on the homepage here are uh, meeting notes, definitions of the initiative, uh, an outline uh, at a high level of the execution steps for the initiatives, uh, as well as resources for stakeholders to get involved and to get more knowledgeable about the issue. Um, there's been some great resources of other readings, articles, uh, and, and thought leadership pieces uh, that are linked there. Uh, and of course, the, the links to the living document registers uh, can be found here as well. Um, the next part of the uh, tool that we're putting together would be the challenges register. So this is a Notion database that allows us to tag challenges according to different variables. The um, challenges will be summarized and described at a high level, and then product codes we apply to it to understand how these challenges impact the different products of MakerDAO. Uh, the initial list of products that we've put together uh, include DAI, crypto vaults, and separating them uh, from being something different as real world asset vaults, maker utility, and governance uh, and, and workforce uh, as, as a concept of a product. Uh, we will start to identify as best as possible stakeholders that support prioritization of solving these challenges. Uh, that uh, would be captured as a clear indication in the forum of a voice of support. And throughout these meetings too, we will work to have stakeholders clarify their perspectives uh, by engaging with the register directly to um, make sure that this data is as accurate as possible. And also uh, at a high level, uh, we're uh, identifying the core units that support this prioritization, uh, mostly identified by uh, what core units are acting as a core unit and making sure that we're keeping separate uh, the contributor as a community member versus the contributor as a core unit to uh, identify uh, possibly what work has gone into it, how they have already thought about the challenge, how their strategies are already working towards solutions to that, uh, to make sure, again, that the short-term work fits into the, the, the broader long-term vision. Uh, we're also labeling the business functions that are involved uh, to try to identify uh, capacity. So as an example, um, legal resources right now at the DAO are uh, a little limited. Uh, we're incubating the LTS core unit to be focused for real world uh, transactions, but the uh, possibility of including uh, advocacy and, and uh, other legal resources may be needed and identifying uh, how the, the, the resources today 
uh, and how uh, SES may need to incubate future resources is, is also a concern. And uh, I've also included uh, notable events just to try to categorize what we learn from big appearances like Flappy Friday or Black Thursday and links directly to the discussions will also be provided for um, anyone to dive into the discussion and hopefully have an easier time of, of navigating the, uh, the forum. Uh, with that as well, the same work will be done for solutions. Uh, the fields will be mostly the same with a few differences, mainly being uh, how, how the challenges relate to the solutions uh, So and, and adding pros and cons. So uh, including all the same data, we'll be able to see what um, delegates and contributors support uh, working on a challenge, which ones support uh, the specific solutions to the challenges. And from there, uh, we will work to form alignment across uh, not only delegates to core units, but delegates to delegates, and then start to document this as well, more as a free form um, uh, website, not necessarily a, a notion database, but one that details and, and tries to provide context and narrative to the, the issues. Um, we will also uh, facilitate strategic initiative discussions uh, around this, uh, this uh, collection of work or, or grouping of uh, challenges and solutions, uh, and, and that will drive us to then formalize a formal vision and strategy roadmap, uh, which again is the broader roadmap to, to guide the, the DAO moving forward. Uh, Valder is sharing links in the chat, and uh, we'll make sure that everybody has access to the presentation so they can also uh, explore on their own. But this brings me to the uh, the ultimate goal of um, the Resiliency Improvement Initiative, which is creating a unified vision and strategy. The uh, need for a clear vision uh, relates to being able to execute effectively in a DAO setting. Since uh, core units are independent teams, they have a, um, a lot of uh, flexibility and freedom to do work and uh, we've seen this create uh, with, without a vision and strategy, a, a disconnect from uh, the governance teams. So to directly address that by declaring the, the, the delegate's vision, uh, we aim to improve the uh, coordination and make a more effective DAO or resilient DAO. Uh, an additional bonus from this work too that we believe is beneficial for uh, MKR token holder voter engagement is that this could uh, manifest into creating a tool for MKR voters to have a real choice bef uh, between delegates. And this next slide, I think, illustrates that the best uh, by the graphic on the right. Uh, this is a political um, multi-dimensional map uh, for um, not specific for the DAO, just working as an example. But as we develop maker-specific dimensions and uh, provide MKR holders the opportunity to take the same questionnaire that delegates will be taking to uh, populate this data, uh, we expect that the alignment created from that will be something that MKR holders uh, haven't really had the opportunity to experience before and, and hopefully engage both uh, larger MKR holders as well as smaller token holders to uh, in, engage. The uh, potential to form clusters then is, uh, I think, um, pretty apparent from the graphic. Uh, this uh, has a couple benefits, which is to reduce the bandwidth requirements for decision making. Uh, it will help us to identify how expertise uh, is is um, available across the delegates and how decisions should be made. And uh, with this, uh, the uh, bandwidth is reduced and the quality of decision making is increased. Uh, another graphic to illustrate this point, uh, which we've changed from uh, previous months if we've, we've shared it, is we flipped the strategy around. And we really see that if you look at the, the far right-hand side vision being set by uh, some of the discussions, 
that are happening amongst MKR token holders, distilling down into the delegate function. And uh, right here is where we're hoping that the resiliency improvement initiative makes the biggest impact, which is to hone in on a strategy that um, the various core units can work within. And it should be noted here that one emerging structure that's working the other way in terms of alignment and coordination is the um, core unit, cross core unit initiatives uh, that are represented here. So when we're talking about the planning for this initiative as a strategic initiative, it's important to highlight the emerging structure that we're seeing from the ongoing discussions uh, with Rune and the MKR token holders. Uh, the four categories that have kind of, that are emerging are uh, voting committees where MKR holders and delegates work together and reach into uh, core units to extract information so MKR holders can set a vision that the delegates can then go out and drive um, at a high level. Uh, the strategic initiative is where the resiliency uh, initiative lives between uh, delegates and core units. And then the cross core unit initiatives and, and initial core unit roadmaps that everyone are familiar with uh, work to implement that strategy then. And some more details uh, about these structures, if uh, you're looking for engagement, the uh, voting committee meetings currently right now are occurring on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Central European time. And the expected output from that is a prioritized list of focus objectives. The strategic initiatives then uh, are bi-weekly meetings um, and the high level issues and solutions uh, supported by delegates to achieve the MPR holders uh, objectives is the, the, the primary output then for that vision and, and strategy roadmap. And then again, multiple core units are working on various initiatives to coordinate the work across uh, the different disciplines and the internal core unit roadmaps then would be the primary reporting to complete the loop back up to delegates and NPR token holders for how um, the work should be done or how the work has been performed and the performance of that. So focusing again on strategic initiatives, uh, um, Maybe I should have deleted that slide, sorry. But uh, talking about next steps for, for the team, uh, here's uh, the overall plan uh, and, and table for what we're looking to define. We want this to be well-scoped and effective. And for that, we know that we need to be swift, but thorough. The kickoff meeting has already occurred uh, and the individual stakeholder uh, engagement meetings are ongoing. Uh, we encourage any stakeholder uh, that is interested to reach out and uh, schedule a meeting. The uh, vision alignment, um, I'm sorry, that should be the, <clears throat> the questionnaire. Um, yeah, the questionnaire then is uh, currently being drafted. And uh, once it's ready, we'll share it with delegates and then start to pump that information in, into the registers that are created. And ultimately, this will be a report published on um, vision alignment once uh, we have come to an overall conclusion. So if uh, anyone here is looking to get involved on the call, the uh, best way to get engaged is to book a stakeholder engagement meeting with SES. Make sure that your uh, thoughts, concerns, and ideas are heard. And we encourage everyone to look at the vision alignment primer, which I believe uh, Vauder just dropped into the chat to prepare for the discussion. Uh, this initial document and discussions, again, will go into supporting the questionnaire. So we appreciate uh, the uh, community's input for that. And one of the, the next steps you could take today too is also looking at the SES MakerDAO.network uh, resiliency uh, initiative page for the primary resources, as well as uh, the living documents, uh, schedules, and, and any other contact information or, or ways to be involved are also listed there. 
uh, ultimately, uh, we want to make sure that this is a transparent initiative. So the uh, Discord channel on the official maker Discord is resiliency-stakeholder-alignment. Uh, this will be the primary communications channel with stakeholders, and it is available to all MakerDAO members. Uh, additionally, uh, on the resiliency page, open and uh, the the coordination calls are recorded and available. And uh, thanks to David GovComs, we got, got the uh, initiatives listed on the MakerDAO public calendar now, uh, and, and engagement is encouraged. Uh, we're also planning to do regular status updates to the GNR call once we have more uh, robust updates to share outside of the uh, overall planning and execution of the initiative and once data has started to be collected. And form updates will be uh, uh, posted next week, uh, primarily being a summary of this call and uh, another way to share the links to relevant resources and then ultimately provide ongoing updates as the initiative moves into um, the second half or more production stages of, of the work. So I would be happy to answer any questions that the uh, audience may have. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's one question from Peyton who's asking, the scope is obviously very broad uh, with a lot of relevant areas to reinforce and up, improve and innovate. Where do you recommend individuals start in terms of how they can individually contribute to the broader initiative? So um, the, like I said, the, the questionnaire and the stakeholder engagement meetings are uh, more tailored towards relevant uh, stakeholders. Um, the, the Discord is probably the best way to get involved to make sure that information is being shared appropriately. And uh, ultimately, the, the, the register, I uh, believe, would be the, the best way to interact to start forming the consensus as well as the same data that the team will have, which uh, I think is uh, a first, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for initiatives here. Uh, but Vader, if you have any other recommendations on how possibly maybe smaller MKR hold, token holders uh, get more directly involved, um, good to share. Uh, so I think um, the introduction today, um, once it's followed with the forum thread next week, will already provide a good opportunity for uh, people to peek in and um, see which discussions are going on, and then also provide their thoughts. So, um, Retro, maybe one thing you can do to uh, uh, to give a, a, a bit more uh, um, practical idea of what the questionnaire would entail. Uh, if you could uh, screen share the document with uh, the preparation questions. Uh, one in the booth could bring the screen share back on. You. So this is the part that um, that should push towards, or uh, the questionnaire draft um, for what will allow us to to push towards a more articulated vision and strategy. So vision is, is of course all about. What do you think that a successful maker now would look like for years from now, for example? And then, um, yeah, we're asking the stakeholders to uh, to specify that for the name to the different uh, products, so the DAI stablecoin, different types of collaterals, the MKR token, and governance, uh, all of which are interesting to look at as uh, as products. So, for example, who is the uh, the user of maker governance? What is their user experience, etc. Then, um, in order to create the kind of political compass that we that we've shown, um, we got we got very lucky there with the Govalfa uh, already starting this work by identifying number of values that were mentioned in the existing 
uh, delegate platforms. And uh, so looking at that list of values, we can ask people, do you think that this value is, uh, is critical value for maker success? Or um, do you think it's irrelevant? Or do you th even think it's, it's harmful to try and, uh, and stick to that value? And then try to figure out uh, if, uh, if you have a top three or something, why do you think these, uh, these values are so important? And why do you think there are other values that are anti-maker? And then in um, terms of strategy, strategy is all about what connects us to the other part, which is the, uh, the challenges um, that we're collecting and uh, the solutions to, uh, to deal with those challenges. So um, yeah, that too is something that we'll explore with the stakeholders and then uh, try and figure out who is supporting the same solutions and um, yeah, who's thinking differently about the kind of solutions that uh, Maker should implement. Um, where is the vision? We thought it was interesting to zoom in on the different products for the strategy. We're mostly thinking about the different professional areas. So for example, legal and regulatory, marketing communications, et cetera. And um, which uh, solutions that uh, these different delegates and other stakeholders have in mind uh, within these areas. Um, so this will be posted together with uh, the rest of the information on the forum. Um, and then there will also be, yeah, there is the publication of the, the register with the challenges, the solutions, and then ultimately the vision and strategy descriptions. So to, uh, to have a look at all that and to provide feedback on it, each from their own perspective and role, I think um, that is definitely very useful and interesting way of, uh, of contributing. There's another uh, question. So El Pro is asking with over a hundred core unit team members participating in the DAO, uh, do you think that this initiative one day will investigate how the DAO can make the employee experience for working within a core unit immaculate? Um, might this initiative look to solve how the DAO can keep core unit team members both satisfied with their work environment and engaged? Um, believing in the DAO's vision, the mission, the purpose and values, and uh, not in the sense of uh, external motivations like high comp and bonuses. And what are some of the actions that can be taken to make sure that employees of the DAO, employees quote unquote, because uh, uh, of course, DAO contributors are not official employees um, and how they can uh, remain engaged. Um, so yeah, I, I think that um, this is actually one of the, the challenges that are already on the list um, that we want to include in the, the initial set to, um, uh, to talk to stakeholders about and see uh, yeah, how they see that challenge of uh, talent uh, acquisition, but mostly uh, retention. And uh, for example, there were other delegates who have also brought up uh, the question of how, how we can uh, make sure that within the decentralized environment with a lot of criticism, uh, or at, at least like a critical attitude towards uh, what is happening, uh, a lot of transparency and a uh, lot of scrutiny of the work that is going on, uh, how we can make this an environment or keep this an environment that uh, uh, that safeguards the uh, the work atmosphere and, and the well-being of, of the contributors. So uh, I see this as, as uh, definitely a potential part of this, uh, this strategic initiative. Um, it's a little bit difficult to predict because uh, right now there aren't that many uh, strategic initiatives within MakerDAO. Uh, so strategic initiative defined as platform where both 
uh, coordinates and delegates uh, come together to um, uh, to set priorities and define a roadmap. So um, it will depend on what the other scope uh, or the other initiative scope will be. But um, right now, it, it seems that uh, yeah, the well-being of contributors is definitely one that would fall within uh, within the scope of this initiative. If that's not the case, then it can be split off and uh, be part of another strategic initiative. Part of the complication here is that um, we're laying the the train tracks out in front of us while the train is already uh, running over them. So um, this is the first time that we we work out these uh, these structures. Uh, for example, what what a strategic initiative, the way that we have at least defined it here, um, how it works in terms of stakeholder engagement, etc. But um, the same uh, the same structure can then be applied to uh, uh, other strategic initiatives that might be out of scope of, of the resiliency improvement uh, topic. So uh, either way, I think uh, it yeah it should definitely be the case that uh, contributes well being and uh, and motivation is is part of that. The plan is arising when merge like between SCS, Gov Alpha, and uh, yeah, so that is definitely something we're seeing is that and the work that we're doing here touches on a lot of the things that also Gov Alpha is doing, and we're we're looking to uh, to to collaborate as much as possible on these because uh, obviously this is um, something that will only be successful if the uh, the relevant core units are. Um, yeah, are on board with us. Uh, the self-insurance fund is actually, <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent comment. Uh, it's one that we have been working on ourselves a lot, and um, we'll make sure to add it to uh, to the solutions. It's, yeah, the, uh, the point that I wanted to to make on that real briefly too is uh, the Discord is the best place to communicate uh, any possible missing challenges and solutions. Uh, just as another way to drive engagement. All right. So um, seems like uh, like we're good. So thank you, Retro, for uh, the thorough uh, introduction to this subject. We'll uh, be posting the company forum thread in the course of next week and um, hope that we'll get um, broader engagement with all of that as well. So thanks everyone for joining and hope to see you again next time.